Seven card, yeah, so <laughs> uh, we have to wait till tomorrow, but I, mean, I, feel, I feel like I've got a, a big chance to be in the fix, so it's going to be a great decision. How do you feel, John, that Kentucky's never had a first overall pick, and you, you could sort of make history? Uh, it'd be good to make history, you know, like I said, y'all got to have talent guys in Ron Mercy, Doug Anderson, and Jamal Mansford, so I'm surprised those guys didn't have an opportunity, but hopefully I can be the first guy to do it. How's this whole experience been for you? Uh, it's been tough. At the same time, uh, ever since the season over, we're basically just finishing up. <laughs> basically, I've been living in the hotel like the last month. I slept in my bed like twice, so basically just been on the move and, and being dedicated to what you want to do. Are you ready to finally have it kind of go over tomorrow? <laughs> uh, yes, man. I, I can't wait to go over and spend time with my family afterwards and have a little get together. John, new owner in Washington brand new situation, they threw a lot of cap space. How do you feel about coming in and being the face of that franchise? You know, I feel that they pick me. I can be come in and do a great job. You know, basically like kind of Kentucky, but it's on a different level. You know, Coach Cal, the whole new coaching staff came in and a lot of talented guys came in, a couple guys coming back, so that's how it basically could be. How would you feel season. how would you feel if you weren't the number one pick if they announced a different name? Uh, you could look disappointed, but you can't be too disappointed because it's a dream come true to be in the situation anyway. So just be happy to be able to be, able to be in the green room and get picked by any team. Best advice you've been given? Uh, from LeBron, not try to go in a little to all the hype, just going in and, and play the game like you love it and just enjoy every moment that you had the chance to be able to play. How do you see you and Gilbert Arenas playing together? Uh, they pick him, we can work out pretty well. He's a scoring guard that can put up, uh, put up a big numbers in a quick amount of seconds. How do you feel, feel about being uh, you know, instantly installed as the team's point guard and ordering veterans around? Uh, it's going to be kind of like it could tell you that a lot of guys that was older than me. But the, the main thing is going in and, and getting respect for those guys. You can't go in and think you're bigger than anybody. So basically just going in and get respect and listen to the veterans also. But I have to be another coach on the court. How do you get that respect? Basically just going in and playing. And basically just like I did, it's going to take time. But you, you just find a way to get respect for those guys. Uh, I feel like if they pick me, it's just not. It don't, you just got to work out some way somehow, you know. Me and Eric figured a way to work it out. We both used to have the ball in my hands, and Eric did a great job of being a uh, two guard this year. So, and then now he had the chance to be the uh, one guard in the So, I had to figure, we'll figure something out to work it out. How do you feel about playing, in, if you are picked by Washington, playing with Flip Saunders and his offense, which, you know, has historically been very good to point guards? Uh, it's kind of like Coach Guy. You know, he's a player's coach. He let, the, he let the guys play and let them make mistakes, but also at the same time, he's going to stop you and teach you the aspect that you need to know and get better in the same situation. But it would be a great thing. That's the kind of coach I like playing for. No, uh, no, not really. Would you like to do that? Oh uh, yeah, I feel, I feel like they big that you got. You know, you want to start talking to your teammates as soon as possible. They can get to know each other and basically just see how things work out. John, who are you looking forward to matching up with the point guard, the NBA point guard? Uh, I don't really have a specific one. All of them is talented. Like you see, Rondo had a breakout season this year, and a lot of guys are, it's a lot of talented point guards. So basically, just have a chance to play all of them good. We got to be prepared to play every night. And, yeah. How do you feel about having to guard those guys? Uh, it's going to be a challenge. I feel like yeah, it's going to be a challenge to guard me on the end at the same time. So you just got to go out there and play. What player does your game resemble the most, do you feel like? I don't know. I hear so many comparisons. First it was there, and now it's Rondo. So I really don't know. So LeBron's giving you advice to tell you where he's going. He's going to play with you in Washington. <laughs> oh, no, nah, he won't never tell me that. He keep it to himself. I try not to answer that because it's kind of a person of his business. So he ain't going to tell me nothing. Are you going to pitch him to Washington? Hmm? Are you going to pitch him to Washington? I can't pitch him nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> John, the Washington Post article, um, how did you feel about that? I feel it was a great article. You know, I did a great article, but it's like at one point, if I got kind of upset about it, one point, they asked me a lot of questions about my dad and things like that. But other than that, I feel like it was a great article. And a lot of people know how my story was. I just don't had to go there. So you know. John, how to play played under the Kentucky spotlight kind of prepare you for the, for the league? I can prepare, I was preparing me a whole lot. You know, the fans are amazing. Kentucky is the greatest place to play, I think, of all time for me. So, like, the fans, how they support you, it's crazy. It's just like that evening, but it's more. You just imagine you traveling more often and people coming around. So, being at Kentucky helped me uh, off the court and on the court a whole lot.
So I might have to split the ball in half and split the feet both of them. Has Obama taken you up on that game of force yet? Uh, nah, I'm waiting for it. Yeah, so. I challenge this to him, so I'm going to miss him. You know, from growing up, in, growing up in Rally and now doing this and kind of being on the big stage, how much has your life changed? I've changed a whole lot. Basically, when you live in the real tough neighborhood and it's so hard by me, it's not too much for me to do with. I got to travel, but North Carolina is not big as all the places I've been. So basically, thank God for having I was in the traveling when I first started from going to camps and you tell us. What's your biggest concern? Biggest concern? Uh, basically not not living like going there and being a problem. You don't want to be a job pick that should have been something that would never did nothing. So basically you just keep working hard and getting better. Are you at all concerned that like, you're so young, do you know who you are? Most kids are even don't. Yeah, I and yet you've got so much stuff going on around you. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm mature enough. You know, college really helped me out to figure out who I am. Deep down inside, you got a lot of time to sit back and relax in your room because you had the class and workouts and two and practice and just the rest. Hey, John, can you talk a bit about DeBarcus and what you think NBA teams should know about him that maybe they aren't seeing? I feel like he, he, should, he should be taken. I feel like he's like probably the, the best big man in the draft. You know, talented, skilled person that can pick and pop and shoot and put it on the floor. So I feel like he's the best big man in the draft. So I would like to take him. And, I would like to have him as a teammate. Do, do, do you, you feel like the stuff that's said about him, the off-court stuff? I mean, do you feel, how fair do you think that stuff is? And like, uh, you can't you can't really control. You know, people have certain stuff that you know they go through certain aspects of their life. And, and like I tell people, he's an emotional person. It's emotion you can see on the basketball court, like a foul get caught. I think he's just emotion. It's not how he is as a person. It's just how emotion. If you see, if you really just have a time a day or two to sit with him, it's funny, like to joke around, have a good time, just like to live life, have a good time. So what about maybe some of the concern, the encore concerns? You know, the conditioning. You know, you only play like 24 minutes a game. What do you think of that, that stuff? That wasn't really because of conditioning. It was basically, you know, you got a lot of fouls caught on him until he adjusted to it. He played more minutes, so it wasn't mm -hmm. just conditioning. But he, like he said, you ask him that, he's working hard enough. You know, he, he, he wanted to do something, but he wanted to not do nothing. So it's a job. You can get cut and you can keep it. Did you ever 